Hello and welcome to episode 63 of the Large Format Photography Podcast. My name is Simon Forster and I'm joined by Andrew Bartram and Eric Matthew. Hello, Andrew. Sorry, who are you? <laughs> and hello, Eric. Oh my God. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm back for a special episode. And uh, first of all, um, I wish to thank our last guest, um, who was Simon Riddell. And, uh, and in particular, I want to thank him for his insight on making large format photography even harder than is required. Uh, right. so, uh, that's, that's ex- exactly the reason why most of us actually do this. So, um, so yeah, taking things to extremes, big thumbs up from me there. Um, I also wish to thank uh, Eric and Andrew for taking care of business since I was last here, uh, which was end of September 2021. Eternity. Uh, yeah, it does seem like a long time ago. Um, we missed you lots of tones, sir. <laughs> yeah. And uh, in particular, I want to thank Andrew uh, for keeping a lid on his swearing. Yeah, that's fine. I, I, I don't Wait. often swear. Now and again, one slips out. <laughs> Very rarely on the podcast, though. But in fact, in normal life, you know, I don't swear much I, th- I think us brits have a a more elucidated way of uh, expressing ourselves you know we don't need to resort oh, to, to the f words <laughs> yeah yeah no. as, a, as a form of punctuation you know or, or <laughs> you know or, or, the, or the lack of ingenuity to find an alternative way of expressing yourself yeah. bloody in bollocks how about that yeah. uh, so uh, in, uh so, so in other words I'm, I'm not thanking eric in any shape or form um especially after that last one we just gave up on i thought i think we actually gave up on bleeping um a few episodes back because so i haven't entirely been away i've been editing uh the the uh the audio of the podcasts uh since September. Forced them to listen to us nonetheless like ghosts from the grave Yes, yeah. So uh, I've been I've been there in in the background, but uh, yeah, it's it's really good to be able to be back and be able to do a bit of a, a catch up because um, I mean, you guys have had so many guests. You've hardly talked about anything you've been up to, um, so uh, it'll be good to hear about those those kind of things. Well, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what I've been up to. Actually, Andrew's been up to a lot of really cool um, workshop stuff and whatever. He's we always just call him the professor. Can we just call Andrew the professessor? Because he's just like constantly teaching people people in the dark room. It's kind of awesome, professor. Well, it seems to me, if you're in America, as soon as you do a bit of teaching, you're automatically called a professor. Whereas over here, you have to actually, you know, have some education and get like a what? Did, what would you have to have, Simon? A master's or a bachelor's or some, you know, highfalutin bit of paper. Whereas in America, you can just, you know, I, I could do a, a day's workshop and put professor in front of my name. Well, you know, there's a sucker born every minute. And that, that phrase came from America. So, you know, obviously you guys hired, like brought me on. So there's two suckers born over in England. Um, I'm just saying. Um, anyways, rotating, pivoting, Simon. Mm-hmm. What the fuck have you been up to? <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> well, where did you go? Yeah, well, I've, I've been very busy, very, very busy. I've been doing lots of things with my 3D printing business. Um, in particular, I've been printing loads of things for Steve Lloyd of uh, Chroma Cameras, um, snapshots, things for uh, Instap backs for his hand. The snapshot, by the way, is his uh, handheld uh, 4x5 camera. Ooh. And uh, that's a point. I, I saw a photo. Um, oh, who was it? Now I can I can never I get confused between Dave and Ellen and black eye, black eyed dog or black eared dog. I think it's black eyed dog. Um, but one of them. I apologise for the person. I've just got it wrong. Dave, um, Dave, sorry, Simon. Dave Wenham. I think is Dave in Ellen is Dave Wenham. Just to confuse you. Yeah. Um, and he lives in Ellen. Yeah. So Dave, it. Dave. I think Dave ran. Um, but for context, and, I, and I'll come on to the snapshot. Dave ran a four by five pinhole camera thing last year, which I was part of. There was twelve of us, and it, and this camera was the one you can go on eBay, and there's a seller in Greece selling these wooden four by five cameras for a reasonable price. I think about ninety dollars or something. So Dave bought one of these, and he got a group of us together. And we all shot some film, sent the pictures to him, and he's in the process of producing a zine. Now, I understand he's now got a snapshot camera, and he's 
doing the same thing. Now, I I opted. I did get asked if I wanted to join in, but I um, I, I declined um, this time. So Dave has certainly got one of those uh, one of those cameras, and I think it's going to be doing the rounds. I don't know about the black black eyed P guy. <laughs> His name is John, by the way. I just that's come to him. But uh, um, well, you may have seen the photograph I'm talking about, or a couple of the photographs. He's been taking some photographs with the handheld yeah. full by five camera at night. Well, it's probably yes, it's Dave. Yeah, I mean they're just some fantastic shots. Yeah. So um, yeah. he's extremely extremely. It seems to me whatever camera he picks up, he produces magical images with it. Really, really fantastic. Some people are the worst. <laughs> the worst of being the best, but that's just like so vexing. It's like, oh man, yeah. Like I have to pick up a camera and literally beat myself to death with it before I get any good with it. And some people are like, oh, look at this thing! I just picked up the antique. It's this very weird contraption, and oh, pull surprise! Like, <laughs> screw you. Yeah, I mean, I think I think John. Best, but, you know, I was going to say John Farnan is equally annoyed on that. Yeah, just pick up any kind of camera, whether yeah. it's in all or large format or whatever it is, and just just knocking yeah. it out of the park. Yep. I mean, but Chroma, Steve Lloyd, it's Steve, right? It's Chroma? Yeah, Steve Lloyd. Um, he just did a, a lens collaboration with Jason Lane. That's right. Mm-hmm. Just see it? It's a cute little thing. Uh, M39 mount, 24 millimeter, just sort of like focus. And I think it, don't even think it's focus. It's a fixed focus. I'm looking at it right now. It just threads in. It probably has... Where does he have this thing fixed? It's probably like a 10 foot fixed focus, maybe, or something like that. And you just go shoot it. Yeah. He showed it when Simon and I sat outside the photography show eating our subways or drinking coffee or something. <laughs> Steve Steve sidled up and showed us this little <laughs> lens, didn't he? <laughs> I love that visualization. He was just there with like these foot long sandwiches. And he, he comes out now with like a trench yeah. coat. And he's like, he opened his coat up and he had them all hanging there. And he said, hey, hey, geezers. <laughs> What do you the, think of these? The lens, right? right? The lens was hanging there when he opened his coat. <laughs> okay, just making sure. <laughs> I just thought that was actually the last time I saw you, wasn't wasn't it, Andrew, at the uh, the photography show? Um, yeah, well, I used to call in in a previous existence as I was heading up to the northwest. I'd occasionally call in and see you and hmm. leave leave something with you or pick something up off you or call in for beans on toast or something. But I don't go that way very often now, so you don't see me. No, no, but. It was uh, it was good to see you there because there was all about apart from it was just good to see you, um, but there was uh, intrepid with there, yep. and um, we also bumped into um, a chap that I've I've uh, been chatted to a lot this year named Christopher Mackay, and he brought with him um, his Gowden Flex, um, which oh. was the four by five TLR. Um, you, sh- you shared a photograph of me looking puzzled or something, didn't you? Exactly, yeah. Um, you were looking puzzled because I don't think it was quite focusing uh, correctly at the time, and I no. think you were, you were struggling with it. And it's, I um, couldn't see anything for it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm happy to say that it's been fixed. Uh, okay. since, um, so I think what was happening, uh, one side of the focusing rail if you like was uh, was being pushed forward and the other side was just being pulled behind it so it was a uh, effectively uh twisted to one side so that, right. that that wasn't helping things um but uh actually that's a point that's been fixed by a chap called george walsh um i think it was on instagram um and uh he's up in liverpool and he's he's doing some good good work on um fixing large formats uh, cameras in particular uh he serviced my mpp micropress uh, which is the british version um of a uh, graphlex speed graphic and uh in particular he um he recalibrated uh the focal plane shutter um and to the point where i actually think it might get pretty close to a thousandth of a second I mean, it's. I think before, I think the fastest was around about two hundred and fifty, maybe, <clears throat> and then random speeds um, from from that point downwards. Uh, you'll be you'll be using it for sports photography and a bit of f one. Well, exactly. So I mean, particularly the, with that big lens that you've got on it. That big lens. I've got a lot of big lenses. No. Oh, but, um, <laughs> I mean, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, I want I want to use it specifically. I've got a, a few uh episcope lenses um 
one in particular I want to I want to play with is a 280 millimeter 3.5 episcope lens. And hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, stop. Yeah. I immediately thought of a camera that goes up your backside, but that's an endoscope camera, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Presumably, you're, presumably you're not talking about that. This is definitely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> or would it make you smile a bit if it did? Um, no. Okay. And there's no shame in that, by the way. No. I mean, you know. <laughs> no, no, I've had plenty of cameras up my backside. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's strange. I've... I've, I've slightly lost track of where i was going with it uh, <laughs> welcome back yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Well, not, large, off, not large format cameras I have to no say. no uh, that's it i know and i know where where you're going with this but i just want to finish off the um the bit about george walsh um in particular it is he did an absolutely fantastic job on my on my market press so it, to the point where i now i now have a level of confidence to go out and use it i still need to you know, te- do a few test shots and things like that, that are things that don't matter. Um, but I, I think it's actually going to deliver with these these very fast lenses that I want to use. Um, so and- does this guy do camera repair or uh, Graflex equivalent tune-ups for a living, or is it in a No, it's a, it's a hobby. Um, but he, he seems to be doing more and more of it. And, you know, and he's, he's willing to take on work. Um, but like I say, he's he's got a, a particular interest. Actually, he's a wet plate photographer as well. Um, but he, uh, the the fact that he services uh, focal plane shutters for graf, uh, graf flexes and uh, including my friend uh, Christopher Mackay, he had a uh, um, a Super D, a four x five Super D, and mm-hmm. uh, he's, he's he's serviced that as well. Um, because to my knowledge, I don't know anybody else in the UK. Uh, that actually services focal plane yeah. shutters, these large ones. So, um, so I'm there's, really pleased about that. There's like three people in the U.S. who consistently service them, but they're booked out like exactly six months. They're booked out for forever. Yeah. Um, and send, or, sending sending or, things out, yeah sending things out of the U.K. to another country and having coming back in again is an absolute nightmare. Um, <laughs> in terms of you know VAT and import duty and things like that. Which is a joke. Oh. Um, but and, Andrew, you were just going to say something then. Yeah, I said, is he self-taught? What's his background to, you know? Um, I believe he is self-taught. I, I don't know a huge amount. I mean, I've had conversations with, with him um, via uh, Facebook and things like that, but I've never actually had a full conversation with him. Perhaps we should. Um, <laughs> just, uh, he's an interesting chap. Um, but when he when he did mine, uh, my microplex, uh, he, he told me that when he opened it up, it was the filthiest camera he'd ever seen in his life. You know, literally debris was falling out of it. Um, so, and it looks so nice on the outside, but yeah, it was absolutely filthy on the inside. There's a sermon in there somewhere. Oh. There is, there is. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, go, going back to where Andrew was trying to take this conversation earlier, um, there's a photograph that um, Andrew put into the Facebook group, um, mm. or Facebook group, which is uh, large format photography podcast he actually also put it into the lensless facebook group as well but yeah, jimmy uh, jimmy oh, hickford I... jimmy hickford replied to that one but he hasn't actually replied yeah to this one yeah i did I, I had to remind andrew that the lensless podcast is for cameras without lenses and that very much has a lens in that picture mm-hmm. um and uh the the odd lens that i'm talking about is a nikon 25 centimeter f4 um which is not a lens that many people would have would have would have heard of. Um, I certainly had no knowledge of it until earlier on this year, and it's uh, it's an interesting lens. It's actually a lens that was initially developed for Nikon rangefinders, uh, so a thirty-five millimeter uh, lens and uh, twenty-five centimeter or two hundred fifty millimeter, um, and then. It's the way that the the lens works, the design, it, it creates a very large image circle, certainly for thirty five millimeter. And uh, Nikon um, realised this, and at the time they had an association with Bronica, um, and they were making Bronica lenses for uh, the earlier uh, Bronica cameras. Um, and I th- and this ties in with me buying a, a Bronica S two A. Uh, earlier on in the year and seen this particular lens for sale um with you got a, one. sorry you got one i got two now 
Uh, oh, lenses? oh no, no, the lenses. No, but I've got two. I've got two Bronica S two A's. The Bronica, oh. sorry, the Bronica S two A is the one camera I. I don't really lust after many cameras. Lusting wouldn't be the thing, but I, I'm really ta- quite taken by it. And there's been a few occasions They're last really year where I crazy. nearly, nearly pressed the button on eBay one drunken Saturday night, but I haven't yet. Yeah, it, I've, I've had two of them, and they have a really funky shutter mechanism, like their internal mirror mechanism. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen it, Simon. It's very convoluted. I was told it was to get around some like patent thing with Hasselblad or something crazy like that. Um, but as a result, they are prone to destruction <laughs> because it's... of that mechanism. And they are not repairable when they do because they're so fucking complicated. Mm. <laughs> um, oh, well, it's... glad I didn't then. They're well, brilliant, though. They're awesome. I love them. I've had several. I just am not nice to equipment. So if it's prone to just being wrecked and you give it to me, it's, you're going to get wrecked. Simon has very delicate hands, so I'm sure Simon treats his well, and they'll last forever. He's got the hands of a midwife. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, just don't loan them to me. There's a, a, I do actually want to just talk, go go back to the uh, to, to the Broder Crest too, uh, but the reason why um, I put that lens which belongs on a uh on, on a bronica uh, which nick had made for i say initially for 35 mil they they made it available to be uh, capable of being mounted on a bronica um, yeah. and i think they only actually made about 25 of them maybe um it's a, it's a small number that were made and the reason why they didn't make too many of them was <laughs> one it was expensive uh, and two it's awful um <laughs> for <laughs> it's oh, it's it's like it's one of those it's one of those lenses that's just so bad it's great, um, and I'm sure it was absolutely fine when it was designed for 35 millimeter film. But obviously, it has this larger image circle, so yeah, they palm, palmed it off on Bronica because they'll take it, and um, and the the edges on it are, are really poor. Um, you've you've got all sorts of aberrations going on. So the the sense of the image is great. And then the further out you go, the the dodgier it gets. But for people like Eric and myself, we actually quite like that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, because it, well, lamogra- lamography could grab hold of it and sell it for you know six hundred quid a pop, couldn't they, or whatever? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Art yeah. lens, call it an art lens. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, um, hey now, I mean that's a little close there, buddy. <laughs> but uh, I, t- I took a, a, an image uh, on the Bronica uh, with it and. Um, and it was a it was a really nice image. It was done. It was an autumn path, and uh, the, the the photograph came out much better than I expected it to. Um, but if you went into it and actually pixel peeped it, um, everywhere other than the center, it was it was uh, almost as if there was camera shake. It was that bad. Um, yeah. But when you look at it as a whole, it just had something about it. And I'm thinking, yeah, I can live with that. I'm 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 happy with that. Um, and then I thought next door, I was thinking, well, okay, cover six by six. Will it will it cover four by five? Oh, tell um, me it will. Yeah, and uh, and well, certainly at infinity, no, it doesn't. But it it, it probably calls, covers the. It gets up to the top. I think it like it, it will cover the the four inch four inches high along the horizontal. Uh, if that makes sense, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. In landscape fashion, anyway, or cover four inches um, at infinity, but it's not the kind of lens you'd ever want to use at infinity. So what I need to do is work out what it's like at portrait length, because as you push the lens out further, the image circle gets larger, and therefore the vignetting actually will reduce. So I might be able to get a squared image out of it on large format. That's what I'm hoping for. If it'll cover a four inch, it'll probably cover three three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure it will. So you could just pop down to a three and a quarter by four and a quarter sheet film and still technically large format. We see, look at this kids. We're getting back to large format. Um, and, <laughs> and, uh, cause I've got a three by four graphics that I've, I shoot the living shit out of. It's a great camera. They're much cheaper than four by five because nobody wants it, but the film holders are readily available. Um, and you can get them kind of all day long for really cheap, sort of this lost format. Um, and then just cut down photo paper or use x-ray film or whatever. I've, I've, um, or put a film back on it and shoot six by nine. I have to say that uh, long, long-term long listeners to this podcast uh, will know that I actually own one of those. Um, oh, there you, you go. Try and, you kept trying to sell it to me, didn't you? Well, you, you said you wanted it. 
But I'd, um, I'd probably still do. Have you still got it? Or have you sold it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, there's a price, there's a price. with the two hundred with the twenty five centimeter f four. There was wasn't there something about it? Something yeah. some catch to it or something? You know? No, no, there was there's was, there was no catch with it. The um, sure? it was it was more about the way that I actually purchased it in the first place uh, because um, I'm not sure if Ben Reynolds put me onto this. Um, oh, you bought it by mistake? Or yeah, did he because buy one um, by mistake? someone I, bought one I by think mistake. He was talking about it. And I thought, oh, oh, I like this, and mm. I want a Graflex. I want a speed graphic, and I, and I and it, oh, this is cheap. And, <laughs> um, and so I suppressed the button, and when it turned up, it was like, oh, it's a model of a four by five um, <laughs> speed graphic. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, it wasn't quite the camera that I thought I was getting when it actually turned up. But it's a lovely thing, but no, I've not done anything with it. Okay, well, don't do anything. With it. We'll talk offline. Yeah. Again. Okay. Again. Well, first, take the two hundred and fifty Ni- Nikon, and Nikon, Nikon, you mean Nikon, right? Aluminium, um, <laughs> and put it on there and see. I bet you'll cover three by four. I'm yeah. sure it will. I have no doubt about that at all. But before we go any yeah. further, Eric, that would be pretty have sexy. You, Eric, have you gone into the large format story podcast? Facebook group and seen this photograph of this thing that Simon's talking about. Um, <laughs> there are some uh, there are some comments underneath which. Uh, it, so now Simon's back. We can we can uh, you can resume your role as Ask Eric, which isn't. Yeah, but, and you can read out the comments that people have. Oh my made. god! It's 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 a ginormous lens on a micro camera. No, no, it's yeah, it is four by five. That is a four by five. Yeah. yeah. There's not many. Ben Reynolds makes a, a, a couple of comments and then there's a. Yeah, yeah. And he's right. It's a good question. I think. Um, what question is that then, Eric? The question, question for the table will a roll film back. With a roll film back, is that a large or a medium format camera? Full oh. disclosure, I prefer, believe the term refers to the format of the film, not the size of the negative. So that's a medium format. Who okay. cares? Who cares? Uh, also, care. actually, more importantly, what is Simon compensating for with that lens? <laughs> Fair. Good question. That That's up for Simon to answer. And can we see the MPP with the Pentagon 300 F4 next? <laughs> well, it, it, I have actually tried. I mean, he was joking by saying the, uh, the Pentagon 300 F4. Um, uh, but it just so happens I've got one of those. And it, it's well, actually, that's quite interesting about it the fact that it does not work at all. Um, the image circle is far, far smaller. Yeah. Um, no. And uh, because ultimately it's down to the, the, the optical design of, of the, of the two lenses. And yeah, it was uh, designed properly. The, the Pentagon was, well, I, I think the Pentagon is a true telephoto. Whereas I think the, the two fifty is probably closer to being like a normal design lens. Yeah. Um, and uh, because I do have a, 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 a Soviet lens um, called a Tear or Tair 33, uh, which is um, a 400 millimeter 4.5, 300 millimeter 4.5. Uh, but all the optics are at the front of the lens. So you can, and you can actually unscrew the optics. And then effectively, where the, the focusing helicoid will be on the lens, the it's effectively a, you just put a spacer in there instead. And you and it will cover four by five, and it covers four by five very, very well. Um, but uh, you spell that? No, I'm curious, how do you spell the name of that lens? Uh, T A I R 33. What a name! Speaking of, of lenses, ooh, they're actually pretty freaking cheap 50 bucks. Yeah, get one, absolutely brilliant. If you, oh. if if you got the means of um, having a shutter, because these lenses we're now talking about obviously do not have shutters in them, and that's yeah. the thing about the the just quickly about the the Bronica S two and one of what the things that, that excites me about it is that it has a focal plane shutter, and it has a removable helicoid uh, focusing helicoid in there, um, which means that as far as lo- uh, medium formats concerned, it's probably. And the fact that the mirror actually drops down instead of flipping up yep. uh, makes it pretty much the most ad- adaptable platform um, for medium format behind, say, a, a, a two by three Graflex. Um, you can argue yeah. that, that one is, but in the terms of an SLR, there's there's right. nothing there's nothing more adaptable than the, than the, than an S two. The biggest challenge with them um, is, I seem to recall, they have a fairly sorry, Andrew's totally falling asleep. They have a fairly deep box, so the focal uh, the flange distance to film is like long. 
Yes. It's like almost 75 millimeters or something. So you can't adapt anything that's particularly short to it. I've, ad- I've right. adapted. I know that it'll, you can definitely go 90 millimeters. 90, yeah. but, you, but ultimately the lens actually effectively fits inside the camera. Yeah, exactly. Um, because I've also made it fit a 100 millimeter triaplan. Um, for, for those uh, for those so. listeners just joining us, uh, <laughs> welcome welcome back to the very latest episode of the Classic Lenses podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Perry G, and I'm in Hong Kong, and I'm joined by Simon Forster. Hey. What's the weather like, Simon? Hey. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Swinging it back to large format. Um, no, I'm sorry, actually... I'm sure I'm sure it's fascinating. <laughs> I'm having trouble retaining the information that you're talking about. Speaking of of lenses, um, <laughs> snoring. Uh, I'll just go ahead and make this public because I've been I, initially I wasn't really telling anybody who these were coming from. Um, but yeah, sorry, we the, started talking about you now, Eric, or are we still have we left Simon? We've left Simon for a moment. Okay, but, we're, but we're staying on lenses and lens building okay, and all right. and things that require shutters, yep. large format shutters. That's okay. Um, I don't mind talking about those. Fans of the podcast know a gentleman who's really active in our community named Jason Lane. Uh, we just talked about who made the the chroma lens, and he's just like this this almost larger than life figure. Uh, he did Pictographica, the the tin type company, and all that sort of stuff, which should be coming back soon. Actually, I hope. Um, anyways, like six uh, dry, months ago, I was going to say the uh, J J Lane dry plates. We talk we're exactly. talking about that with uh, yeah. glass plates. Yeah, exactly. Um, which whose production is just shut down uh, because they moved to Arkansas because he became, I think, vice president of engineering at LaCroix Optics. So he left his his freelance lens. He's an optical engineer for the listeners. And so he's in charge of like all their optical design and, and all the stuff. So, so did you say he stopped doing the J, J Lane dry plates? Or yeah, something? because they moved. Oh. They moved and his production facility was his basement. Right. You've got the yeah. chap doing, I've forgotten his name, the chap doing the zebra plates, haven't you? The zebra plates? Yeah, he's take? in Eastern Europe, as I recall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've never actually talked to him. But um, yeah. so, I mean, the, the J Lane stuff should be coming back soon. I think uh, Jason said that they're, he's trying to find or he's getting pretty close to like finding a space to rent to oh, okay. restart production. Um, I think he's then got to find some children to work for him in his basement. Exactly, basic. exactly. <laughs> his kids are getting old enough to be like, Dad, I don't want to pour yeah. emulsion anymore. Stop it. Um, I actually want to go on a date. I mean, it needs to head down to the Mexican border with a van and pick a few up and bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Actually, no. Anyways, um, not touching that with a 20 foot pole. Um, so yeah, he apparently was going through the the back. He had his assistants go through the back rooms and found all these old optical elements. And he just messaged me and said, "We've got a bunch of stuff. We're never going to use it. They're like prototypes and like short runs and things. We're boxing up everything that's that I think will be interesting to you and shipping it." And I was like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm like, okay." So two big ass boxes showed up wrecked by FedEx, but showed up at my door and uh, does that mean i might actually get my lens one of these days then yes and that yellow uh that that thing right there behind me which people who are just listening can't see is are just storage bins filled with 600 600 optical elements Mm. that he sent me with the design specs so i know everything about them and I was like, holy shit, I actually have to learn how to like design lenses now because I, I have the information to do it with, um, which I'm setting aside for a while because I've got other projects. So he messages me last week or earlier, yeah, just this last week and says, okay, I'm here's the FedEx, I'm sending you the last shipment. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, we just finished up. I'm like, wow, how, what are you sending? He's like, oh, another 1,600 optical elements. What? I'm like, have you got these then, or are they still on the Not way? Not yet. They're, they'll show up on Tuesday. Where are you going to put those then? I no. don't fucking know. You tell Heather to build <laughs> you another storeroom. I'm I'm going to have to buy like a, a library index card store cabinet or something. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have 2,200 brand new optical elements of all kinds. Convex, oh. double convex, concave, double convex, all of them. Um, 
ranging from I think 24 millimeter up to there's some in the back there that are three and a half inches in diameter. Just huge for making lenses. Well, you're never going to get through. You're never going to use them all, are you? I'm so try. would you? Yeah, I mean, would you consider doing what your matey boy? I want to call him Fred. Something the guy who sells lenses for top and safety each. What's his name? Surplus Shed hmm? Man. Surplus Shed. Oh, Surplus yeah. Shed. Yeah. Him? You could go into competition with him. <laughs> Probably not. I mean, he he's also a machinist. I don't know. Maybe um, first I have to figure out how to actually like make lenses because usually I just buy stuff and slap them together and go, oh, that makes a horrible image. Nope. Or oh, that looks kind of cool. Sure, I'll like get five more, six more of those, um, and only do pairs at the most or singles. Um, so now I've, I actually have the means to pick and choose and make perhaps a double gloss or a cook triplet or all sorts of designs I know absolutely nothing about besides like looking at a screen and saying, mm -hmm. oh, that looks like an illustration of a lens with three lenses. Let me see if I can find things with approximately those shapes and uh, put them together. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I will have a year of learning how to actually or attempting to learn how to actually make lenses and just pestering Jason Lane a whole shit ton saying, why is it not working? And having him patiently attempt to explain it. With his ginormous brain to my stone axe simple brain. But it'll be fun. <laughs> so yeah, that's that that's a thing. That happened. I'll I'll post photos in the in the group when, when they arrive if FedEx doesn't attempt to destroy them again. They're awful. FedEx is awful. Sorry, if there's anybody listening who works at FedEx, please just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, well, at least at least FedEx are actually sending things at the moment. And over in the UK, uh, currently, uh, as I speak, which what's the date today? Fifteenth uh, of uh, January, twenty twenty three. Royal Mail have been hit by um, some kind of um, ransomware attack. Oh and, no! Um, and as a as a result of it, their computer systems are uh, totaled, and they and at this moment, I'm in a situation where I cannot actually post anything internationally uh, via the Royal Mail, and that's really when the kind of things I send Royal Mail is the only way of doing it. Otherwise, you're paying like three times the price. Um, so it's um, yeah, pretty drastic at the moment. Just 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 things waiting to go and hoping that people have got the patience for 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 what's going on and there's no uh got no idea how long it's going to take before it actually resolves itself that's so simon simon mm. what else have you been up to large format wise you've been doing things with the you've been doing things with the six towns dark room haven't you tell I, us about that yeah, well uh, really the, the story of my large format photography this year has been a tale of woe Mm -hmm. um, and disaster. Well, this year's only fifteen uh, days sorry, old. Yeah. You didn't uh, mean that, did you? Yeah, I say you're that's, passing that's, a lot in there these last two weeks. It, that's very true. It's still been a year of woe. Uh, yeah, but last year um, was even more woe um, uh, because I mean we went the Six Towns Darkroom Club in Stoke on Trent, which is uh, I'm 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 a member there, and most of us are actually interested in large format photography, uh, which is a good thing. Um, and we have a a. Uh, a seven by five uh, enlarger as well, which was donated to us by oh no, Steve Sigsby. Steve Sagsby, thank Sigsby. you, thank you. That was embarrassing. Um, and uh, so um, yeah, so we we can we can do large format up to seven by five. Not that I've done anything larger than uh, four by five yet, um, but we went out to uh, North Wales. Uh, Snowdonia is a, is the the region of it, and it's a it's a I sort of slightly hesitate to call it mountainous because you know uh, Eric knows what mountains are and uh, our mountains aren't quite on the same kind of scale as uh, as, 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 the, as as the kind of stuff you're dealing with. But um, but there are mountains and um, we're we're happy with them and uh, and it's 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 pretty <laughs> and uh, and I, I went out with my uh, my chroma carbon adventurer uh, scare, scaring the sheep with my with, because it's bright orange. Um, and had a pretty wonderful day 
um, as as did we all. It was a really really nice day, and I was using things like um, a uh, Taylor Taylor Hobson meniscus lens, um, oh. which is for a much larger format. Uh, but I managed to extend, put an extension on there, and, and use a, I think a Copal three. I think I've got a Copal three shutter, um, and it uh, still didn't vignette, even though it was like stuck down the end of a tube. Um, and yes, yeah, so I had a great day and made around about 10 photos. I took notes of how I took the photos and not one of them uh, came out. They, it, it was just a complete wash uh, to the point where I think like the best photos I actually had were, they were lo- the negatives were larger clear with, and then with a couple of details that showed me that, yeah, I was in North Wales. I could remember that particular part of uh, this corner of the photograph. And and that was pretty much what went wrong. Well, exactly. And and this this is the lesson, really. I mean, it, this continued, by the way. I went out again and did some other stuff and had a lovely time and ended up with no workable images at all. Um, and I was I've I finally, finally realized that you can't do everything all at once. Um, at some point, you need to settle down, pick something. I don't know whether that be a particular kind of film, a certain kind of developer, a certain kind of way of actually taking photographs and exposing the scene um, rather than just just winging it um, or, oh, let's try this and let's try I resemble that, that remark. Yeah. And, uh, and because ultimately I, I never actually truly got to the bottom of what went wrong because there were so many things that could have been the cause, uh, one of which was um, badly stored uh, film, um, which was, uh, it was some, it had a box of, uh, Adox CH 102, uh, um, in the fridge, not in a, pl- not in plastic, just in the fridge next to where the, uh, the cooling element is. So half, when I actually got it out the night before, half of it was actually wet and frozen. And the other side was just, just wet and cold. Um, so I left it out overnight and uh, I'm thinking, well, you know, people freeze it, and and water's not really that much of a problem, is it? And it's in, it's still in its case, in its uh, black wrapper, and all this kind of stuff. So I think it should be fine, and that may have been a contributing factor. Um, the, the 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 I wasn't sure if my rodinal was was actually working correctly, um, whether I even measured it right, and then the third the third factor was my. Um, my exposure meter and this is probably the biggest learning of the lot is that an an exposure meter is there to give you a guide it is not there to tell you what to do um, because you know it it will give you some information based upon how you how you're using it but you do you don't have to believe everything it's well well, actually no you don't have to believe everything it says but sometimes it's wrong if it it seems to be telling you bollocks then you have to, alarm bells go off, don't yeah, they? But, yeah, but that that you assumes know? that that assumes that I'm prepared to believe it's given me bollocks information, right? And that was where the problem is. I was just looking but at it, it but even with even you know, if you point that thing down at the ground on a reasonably bright day and you've got 100 speed film in, and if it's saying something like, um, you know, 125th of a second at f5.6 or f8. It's going to be in the kind of ballpark, isn't it? In in England, anyway. Yeah. In the middle of the summer, it might be f eleven or something. But but if it says one one two fifth of a second to f two point eight, you think nah, that's it. That's bollocks. I just yeah. sunny at sixteen. If it's a bright day, like I had one meter, oh, my balloon. Yeah, but it's in America. We don't. We don't. We we apply the sunny sixteen rules differently over here, Eric. Well, yeah, because you don't have sunlight. You know? No, no. That's probably the reason, there, uh, Simon. Were you actually photographing in the dark? Well. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing is, you both made excellent points, and they show that the, the, the two of you have a level of intelligence, whereas I was not using any intelligence, and I was just slavishly following what it told me. Um, and the reason, that, the reason, but the thing is, the reason for that is, it, in the past, it's just always delivered for me um, mm. using um, not the reflective. What's the other one? Incident um, metering, meter yeah, and I could do that with uh, for slide film, and yeah, this, and, should, and be reli- was, should be reliable if you if yeah. your and it has six, been pro for what? six thing is working properly. Yeah, and, there, and there you go. And then this is the thing. I then subsequently found my pro for six was working occasionally. What well, was working very very well 
some of the time, and o- other times, actually, it was giving me erroneous meter re- meter readings. I, I often just whip out the iPhone and use the built, in, you know, the meter app. If I've got any doubts at all, yeah, in it, and that'll give you that'll get you in the right ballpark. Point it down at the ground, you know, so you're not, and yeah, you, you're going to be in the ballpark, aren't you? You know, yeah. on Route sixty six, when when the four F died, it started giving me like, you know, fifty ASA film, bright sunlight, one one hundredth at f like. Just ridiculous spots of light. I think I, I Sunny F sixteen checked it, and it was saying instead of one fiftieth at F sixteen, it was saying like one fiftieth at F thirty two. Just like, mm-hmm. like 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 I was in the middle of the sun is what it thought was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I just used uh, I had a Fuji X one hundred S on me, the first generation. And I just switched to metering with the little X one hundred S, and the thing was just fucking sorry, Simon. The thing was bloody spot on the entire time, and that system worked great. Yeah, I. Well, I yeah yeah the thing is i've I've learned i've learned the hard way that i can't just slavishly follow the what the damn thing is saying and that's exactly what i was doing you know yeah well and also to your point of doing everything at once like i'm just as guilty of that and then just banging my head against the wall going why isn't this working i'm trying a brand new film a brand new development type with a camera i've never shot before what could possibly go wrong yeah everything is the answer so the where, where things start to get better uh having realized that i need to you know limit myself um i i went to see my friend up in lancashire uh, christopher mckay um who's a very interesting chap and he's got an excellent camera collection and he's actually somebody that's interested in potentially doing like large format workshops as well because he's got a well he's uh spent most of his professional life as a photographer in canada and he's, he's come back to the uk and um and he, he has plenty of cameras for for people to just turn up and and use including a number of large format cameras and i think it's got about four or five enlargers um <clears throat> of different sizes and so on but that's that's probably for another, another time um but i went up to see him and we he was having a bit of a creative lull um as we as we all have and um and we we when i was coming up to see him he said we should go to this place called the queen street mill uh, which is a, an old Victorian mill in Burnley in the north of England. And uh, I thought, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And we went out. But th- what we actually did, we went with one camera um, with the view that what we'd do, it's one camera between two of us, and we'd walk around and we'll just talk about the photographs we, either of us might wish to take. And we talk to each other about the process involved and what, we want, what we're trying to achieve and, and, and so on. And uh, so we took his, his, his Hasselblad with us and... Um, and that was exactly what we did. And it was a really interesting experience um, to talk to somebody that is in the same situation as you, has got access mm-hmm. to the same camera as you and the same lens or lenses. And, um, you know, I, I learned from him and, and I think he got some inspiration from, from, from me. And I think we both took photographs that probably we may not have done if it hadn't been for some of the conversations that, that, that we were having. Um, so, that was in itself just a, a good experience. But the bit that really sort of awoke me uh, is we, we went back. We'd been uh, using HP5, um, and the, we had enough time for him to develop it. I've never I've strayed away from H, HP5, largely because mm-hmm. I've had my experiences of it as, as such that I, I think that it's grainy. Um, that's, that's what's in my head, uh, which is I know that isn't um, necessarily true. Um, but, uh, and I'm, I'm not currently a fan of grain. I used to be, I'm not at the moment. And, uh, so he developed it in HC 110, uh, dilution B, I think it's dilution B, which is one to 31. Uh, it was yeah. definitely one to 31. Um, and, and he then, he then just like through, through quickly thought, okay, let's just develop one of these photographs, put it onto, uh, uh an enlarger whacked it in there did did one did one test and thought mm, okay let's let's wind up the magenta not necessarily now what is grade four on the magenta he goes no i think we'll turn this to this this mark <laughs> yeah because i think it needs this much uh magenta and uh and knocked and knocked it out and produced an absolutely beautiful print uh that was exactly what i would lo- like to see in a photograph and it certainly wasn't full of grain and uh and it, it just made me think okay is just use a film that lots of you know the world loves HP five. Um mm-hmm. HC one ten is something that you know every everybody knows what it is. I've never actually used it before, but it's a it's a tried and trusted uh way of way of doing things. 
and um, and now I'm now currently in love with HP five and uh, HC one ten, and I've literally this morning I've I've just ordered a a pack of twenty five uh, four by five sheets uh, to, oh, nice. to 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 do that because I've still got some adox, um, some which I know has been stored correctly, but it's that it's that case I just want to just nail my process down because I know that in medium format. I can take an HP5 photograph and develop it and make it look like I want it to do. So I need to prove to myself now that I can do exactly the same thing in large format. So when you do that, are you going to pull pull an Andrew and like get the the gray card, like the of the, the ten the zones, and put it up and do I'm some test sheets? That. I've given up on that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like test develop until you get it where you want it. You going to go full Ansel on us here? No, no. I mean, no, what, I, what, what, what I, what I've always done until I tried to get more scientific and then gave up because I've just gone back <laughs> to what I've always done, is, um, you might want to call it trial and error, really, um, but it's a kind of pragmatic approach to achieving what works for me, you know. So when it when when folks online, so let's take a step back. When folks online say, "What's how should I rate HP five or how should I develop it?" And someone gives a definitive answer. Quite frankly, it's bollocks. Okay, just to I, I sort of don't swear much, but we don't think that word's swearing, do we, Eric? It's um, bollocks. Crazy. So it's what works for you. It's what works for you. So if you take a photograph and you've got no detail in the image, Simon, yeah, um, but you've got like edge markings and they're nicely well presented, then you've developed the sheet of film, okay, but you haven't thrown enough light at it, so. If you if you start with a 400 speed film and you ex- set your camera or use your meter um, on your large format camera, which might have a lens on, which may or may not be accurate, um, uh, the chances are you're going to be down at the slightly slower end of the speed because you've got it stopped right down to f45. So a second might be two seconds. It might be half a second. It might be a quarter of a second. I mean, who knows? Um, and then the next camera you use, the shutter speed is completely different. So. So with if your final image, you're consistently over time getting blank shadow areas in your images, and you say, well, you know, whether or not you were, let's just say, metering for the shadows, we won't talk about what that actually means for the moment, but if you wanted to get shadow detail in an area and there's consistently no shadow area and your negatives are devoid of shadow, then just rate that film or change your meter setting to a slower speed, you know? And that, and that's it, you know. And then, when you've got your nice shadow detail, that becomes your working speed. But, but that yeah. might not be the same. That might not be the same for the next camera you pick up, particularly large format, because all those shutters might be a bit different, and meters can be off by a stop easily, you know. So, uh, you know, and, and so keeping a simple process, like I think, is what you're trying to do, Simon, with one film and one develop is a really useful thing to do and having a meter that you can rely on and it doesn't matter you know don't lose a lot of sleep by going comparing one meter to the next use a meter that you're happy and you like and you know works if you're getting good shadow detail or you're getting some shadow detail where you want it to be at the speed whatever the speed is you're rating film at well that's good that's good that's that works for you it might not be the same for other people but that becomes your new normal type speed and then when you're developing you start off with the manufacturers start off with the manufacturers times if you find that your highlight areas are so blown out and dense that you have trouble scanning them or when you do scan them there's no detail thing well actually the sky should look you know i don't want it to be like a spectral point it should have some should have some um, you know a bit a bit of uh, tonality to it well the development time is too long for you so cut it you know and and if you want to talk zone systemy thing to move high 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 value tonality down by one zone or a stop is about a 30 percent reduction in developing time so cut and that sounds huge i know so if you if your highlights are out of control cut your development time by 30 percent and try that and see how that works for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the the I won't say I won't call it the poor man's, but this the simple man's um, zone system is pretty much like you said, meter for the 
meter and exposure to the shadows develop for the yeah, highlights. But, but, but a lot of people, Eric, when people, uh, some people, some people, a lot of people, I don't know, it's not always clear what people mean by that. If, the, if you point your meter at a shadow area and take that reading and translate it direct to camera, sure, you're going to get good shadow detail, but you've got far too much than you really need. And what that does is push your highlights way up the, Mm -hmm. up the curve and they and your highlights become then difficult to control so yeah, metering, well, is, metering for the shadows saying. really is metering where you want detail and yeah. then what ansel adams called placing i'm doing in placing your shadows so reducing the exposure down by if you're bruce barnbound one stop or two stops so in ansel adams terms that placing them on zone four or zone three and that then bring then you can meet to see your highlights see are they five six seven eight stops more is mm -hmm. my film going to handle it do i need to do anything with the development yeah well, like i said the poor man's version the simple man's version is meter where you want those shadow details then cut like 15 to 20 percent off your development time to bring the highlights in and then you that's where yeah. you start and you go so all, from there all the old press photographers people i used to read about you know, back in the 80s, before the interweb, uh, the interweb's vast bank of knowledge and experts, they would always say, mm, and they would suck their teeth. Well, I imagine them sucking their teeth and saying, mm, any new film that you're unsure of, rate it at a third less than the box speed and cut 20% off the development time, and you'll have a negative that you can print with a lot easier, probably. You know? And they said that's often, you'll find that's a good starting point. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. For, for, if you want a negative that has good detail end to end, if you're not bothered and you just want soot and whitewash, high contrast images, which is fine, and that's a, certainly a look, you know, then mm -hmm. you don't worry about it. But you can produce that sort of high contrast image from a negative which has got all the tones in, but you can't produce one with all the tones in if the negative's not got them in the first place. Yeah, exactly. I mean, with all that said, I am. Um, guilty of just going in and just like going Doop! with the meter and saying here we go and just shooting the shit out of it and yes yeah. just... well i do that a lot anyway but then it depends where you, what it's if you've got confidence in your meter confidence at where you're pointing it and you've got a, a sense of what the weather's like you know i mean hp5 people talk about it being bulletproof is it it's it, because if you take a a middle tone reading so simon you're up on your mountain and you and you point your profi six meter at some uh the back of your hand in shadow or a bit of gray granite you know you've got probably a good five stops either side you know and even you should be producing an image <laughs> even, even. <laughs> I don't, you don't even have to worry about the zone system probably you know well my my, my pro physics is is now consigned it's it's gone um i'm, I'm just refusing to use it now um, what are you using now then well Your iPhone. I've, no 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 um I've, although interestingly enough, I, I, it used to be that um, I couldn't really get a read, meter reading from a from a phone um, that was that was any good. But um, recently, it turns well, out. Well, you, how would you know? You don't seem to know. Well, I would t I would test it against my my dodgy my dodgy <laughs> light meter, and it wouldn't necessarily agree. Um, but uh, but then uh, back in the day when my Pro Six worked, um, I, I couldn't really match it, and uh, whereas. Now it seems to be more uh, reliable. I've I've got a an old um, Minolta. I say old. No, it's digital. Um, a Minolta flash meter three. four. Oh well, yeah, I have uh, they're good. They're good, yeah, aren't they? It's it's it, it, it is. Got the swivelly. Got the swivelly head on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The problem is that it's got a dodgy electrical connection on the. Oh, uh, there we on, go. On the so why don't you just get a meter that works? Oh, no, no, well, this thing. Instead I of own, buying I, crap or well, getting old dodgy is, stuff. I own. <laughs> Three, I own three spot meters. Yeah, and they're all crap, um, I bet. No, you've got that. that you've got I've that. Got I've seen one of them. You've got that Pentax. Yeah, I've meter. got a Pentax digital meter. Does um, that work? Or does, that, um, does the meter flicker around when you well, press that, that, seems, that seems to work. Um, okay. And I've got you a, sure? You yeah, sure? I've got, I've got an, an older Soligor meter with a dark, with a with a needle, which I really like. And you can also mm. adjust it as well with a screwdriver <laughs> yeah. if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Want to, to get to, zero. To get the yeah. zero set. And I've also got the the Riveni spot meter as well. Oh yeah, uh, that's pretty which reliable. I still yeah. Used. Um, oh, that's and, good. I like I like my Riveni. Yeah, so so it's now it's now making me think. Yeah, this could be the time for me to you know, to to embrace the zone system uh, mm, because I've got no, three. Exactly, yeah. no, don't <laughs> don't just re go out next time you go out. Take your HP five with you uh, and 
rate it either at 400 or three something, you know, 350 or something, or 250, somewhere around there, 250 to 400. Rate it somewhere there, and or even just shoot it at box speed if you want. I think you'll be fine. And use your and use your dilution B thing because you know, you know, what when you went out with it with Matey Boy, what did you just rate it on your Hasselblad at 400? And and when I've and when I've used it myself <clears throat> on on my Bronica, I, I rated it four hundred, and I yeah. was happy with what I was getting. Well, you know, uh, it, it's I don't think you're going to have to worry too much. You know, it, yeah. as I say, meters can be a stop or more out between one and the other, and certainly large format lenses can all be can all be funkily different. Yeah. Um, but if you're pointing your meter and you're reasonably confident at with it at some kind of grey tone. You've got quite a lot of leeway, even if it's like a stop out. You know, you're unlikely to be too yeah. far out. And if you find that your highlights, then so your only problem, you're unlikely to suffer from lack of shadow detail doing that. The only problem is on a really bright day, you could start leveling out on the, you know, on the on the highlights, and and density will start building up, and so you'll find it hard to print through it or to scan through it. Then you might want to tweak your development times, but one thing at a time, you know, just yeah it's all very simple isn't it you know start don't alter your gear too much go out with one camera one lens one film and developer yeah and don't keep jumping around no know, that's, with, that's... With, with with like that monstrosity of a photograph that you've placed on the <laughs> well that's, that's i absolutely... know why don't i just try this i'll try i'll yeah. try this new lens <laughs> with a camera that i you know okay yeah i think it would work hey stop making this personal i do this yeah, all yeah. The time. it's just more it's just more film. fun isn't it um, yeah. I, I know that we um, we're going to be losing uh, you very soon, Andrew. We, are, so we're going yeah. to start wrapping up very very quickly. But um, I just want to repeat a phrase that I, I wouldn't. I'm sure I've said this once before, but I, I really love it. Um, and uh, it's because if, if you have uh, two spot meters and they're both giving the same reading, one of them's lying. Okay. Oh, that, be right. It was funny when I heard I'm it. I'm trying to work out whether it's a, a wise <laughs> comment, meant to be a funny comment, or I'm, I'm just yeah, stupid. I'm, I'm probably missing a line of it anyway, but uh, there you go. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that went down well. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> Do, Have we had any emails, by the way, Simon, um, in the year or so? That, quite, uh, quite, quite possibly, but um, not many. Um, uh, but well, we, can, we can we can save those. We've been fairly really inactive. Sorry, folks. Yeah, but uh, what I do very very quickly want to say is thank you because we've uh, so I've not fed you information about uh, our coffee dinner donors. No, um, no we, we me and Eric are just sweating every episode to think that we're yeah. eventually going to have to pay to host the show. Yeah, well, yeah, I yeah. I, ca- I cannot remember the last time that we actually gave any kind of information out uh, on this. So I'm going to no, do no, no, every time. No, 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 no. I'm about the people who have actually. Oh no, not, not since it. not since you were last here in yeah. 1850. Ex- exactly. So well, let's just um, we'll <laughs> keep, keep, keep this quick. And uh, so last year, which is 2022, we had three donations for the whole year. Thank and, you. Uh, and I just wish to thank those people. And those people are Patrick, um, who says uh, your podcast has been a perfect blend of stimulation and relaxation uh, for a stay-at-home parent of a toddler please keep it up thank you patrick um wow. and and then in i've got two here the first one by ruben r and then a few months later i've got ruben robles so i'm sort of thinking that's the same person I, that I sounds don't like the same person that. Yeah. Um so uh, but Ruben R uh, says thank you so much um for all that you do. I'm very new to large format photography and enjoy catching up on all the previous episodes. So much to learn. Oh, uh, oh actually there's a bit you more. won't learn much from us, Ruben, that's a sure thing. Yeah, and uh, and and enjoying every step of the way. It's it's interesting. Uh, today, a, a large part of today is very similar to how uh, the, the podcast started, which was trying to get things into my thick head. Um and so uh, having been doing this for uh, several years now i'm still stupid and there's so much still there's so much to learn and you just keep on learning as well so uh yeah you might be new to it now well i think most people stay new to it for a very long time mm. and i think that's a good thing because it just makes it interesting 
Um, and then you got Ruben Robles, uh, this was on the 3rd of October, said, thank you so much for great content. Um, keep doing what you're doing. So uh, thank you. So uh, um, thank you all. And if you wish to uh, donate to the podcast to help things uh, going, and I think it actually costs £120 a year for the hosting fees. Um, if you go to the go to coffee.com, that's ko-fi.com, and then somehow find us. Um, because I, I believe you can type in large format photography podcast, but in the past, nothing it just didn't work. Um, so it was a challenge. Um, I think so, the link the link we put in the show notes uh, every time. Don't... I'm sure that works. I'm sure it does. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that it does. But it's it's how many people actually get to see the show notes? So uh, well, we post them. Do we? I don't know. Do we post yeah, them every time? I don't have no idea. Given, I can't remember. Donate. Check the show notes. Yeah, and the yeah. link is there. But the show notes are only yeah. in Facebook, I believe, and lots of people don't go there. Ah, uh, don't they show up on the? They show up on the podcast on the podcast, possibly. I don't. I they mean, do I, don't know. Will, I think they do. And when on Podbean, what I tend to use, I'm sure they um, show up. Yeah. On there. So uh, yeah. So if you go to our podcast host, which is uh, Podbean dot com, um, and search for large format photography podcast, you will see the show, the show notes there, and hmm. uh, the link will be there and clickable. Um, which is by far the easiest way to find us. So uh, any any help you can give us, it's appreciated. Um, right. Um, technically, now we're one minute over uh, Andrew's mm. cut-off time. Yeah. Um, so uh, very, very quickly, have you got any uh, shout-out, Andrew? Uh, no. Are no? <laughs> no. Oh, really? Um, well, uh, to you two, actually, of course. Um, just Andrew's been pretty much taking the entire load over the last six months of finding guests and doing the thing and prodding me to show up. Um, so I can't really take any credit besides showing it because Andrew's literally been doing all the work. Um, and we don't know so, that we haven't put that many shows over. It's been a bit of a yes, I know, but when we do, it's been you. I know, so, it has, yeah. I wouldn't, I don't like to blow my own, I don't like to blow my own trumpet. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Oh, Jeez thank you. Louise, oh, man. Oh. You Brits, you take compliments so poorly. Yeah. He's blushing now, it's adorable. And Simon for <laughs> no, that's the guy. To, that's the guy behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon for continuing to to put up with my bleeps. Um, well, I've given up with bleeps now. That, that's it. They just go out. <laughs> I worn him yeah. down. And the guests we have had, and hopefully the guests that we will have soon, we've got a couple lined up that I'm uh, that I'm working on that I'm really excited about. So, oh, that's yeah. cool. Um, I have uh, one shout out, and that's to uh, Graham Jago. Um, uh, of the Sunday 16 podcast uh, sort of becomes sort of part-time uh, podcast Ooh. host, because it's not been doing, uh, well, he's sort of been taking a break, although he, he came back the other week uh, to do their Sunday awards. Um, and, uh, but the reason I want to give uh, Graham the, sh- uh, the shout out is because uh, his grandma uh, recently died. In fact, um, the funeral was uh, a couple of days ago. And, um, Graham's grandmother is somebody that's known to a few uh, large format photographers uh, yeah. because uh, we've um, had the pleasure of staying at her house when uh, there's been the uh, the photography show in, in Birmingham in the UK and possibly other, other, other things as well. But I was there earlier on this year. Um, I think it was this, this year. Was it last year? Or was it for a completely different reason? I think it was for a completely different reason, actually. I think it was for uh, doing something with um, the late John Whitmore um of also at the Sunday 16 podcast um and i stayed uh at his grandmother's house and we didn't turn up there until something like about 11 o'clock at night and she was there up for us and um and stayed with us chatting for over an hour and she's well into her 90s i think she was like 98 or something possibly even 99 and she was lovely beautiful person to talk to the mental agility was, was was absolutely all there, and um, and she and she didn't even look bad on me in the morning after when she made toast and I and I put too much black currant jam on the toast and I was I sort of embarrassed myself and uh, she 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 didn't even give me a funny look about it as well so um, no I um, so there we go so uh, thoughts to Grain there uh, was uh, he's lost a, a, a great woman in his life yeah um, okay Ooh. and also a quick I totally forgot Jason Lane huge shout out to Jason Lane for continuously encouraging me and like sending me a lifetime worth of optical elements jason rocks yes jason is the shit yeah so okay so uh andrew um if somebody wanted to contact us uh what's the best way to do that um by email say ah! large 
a large format photography podcast at gmail i don't know dot, yep, oh, I I ask Eric now. gmail.com is that right yes L- large it's not a there in there is it large format photography <laughs> podcast at gmail.com eric is very proud of you well done there i am yeah. so proud of you Mm-hmm. And, and uh, so andrew if uh, people want to see the things that you're doing or just see what else you're getting up to on the various social well, medias I, out there i haven't yet um fled twitter to masturbate or mastodon or whatever <laughs> the heck it's called <laughs> um <laughs> so you can still find me at twitter at warboys snapper and uh, you can find me on instagram I don't know, Andrew Bartram, maybe, or Warboys Snapper. You can find me on those places. If you, oh. I'm so famous, you can Google my name or Warboys Snapper or Andrew Bartram, and I pop up on all those things apart from Mastodon. <laughs> so I don't really understand what that is. No, I, I don't quite get it myself. Stay, I've got, I've got to... stay, with, stay with Twitter. and you know, I, We know we can talk all day about Elon Musk and all that stuff, but I've invested 12, 11 years into Twitter, and it's transformed much of my analog photography with the people I meet, the relationships I've formed. And uh, I, I just have too much invested in, in it really. And I, if I don't engage with, you know, idiots or people that want to be horrible, I can block them or mute them. And then generally the algorithm sends people my way who I'm happy to talk to. But I think yeah. if you keep, if you keep discoursing, discoursing, talking to, um people that are just idiots or you know you just want to pick fights with people then algorithms like that so they'll keep shoving more of that stuff your way yeah good advice and then so I'm, I'm also in some photography groups on twitter so you can go into these little groups can't you and i'm in a couple of those and that then you just go into those and all you hear is film photography chatter yeah and you eric how can people keep up with you um I've, I've never been a, a twit guy so pretty much um on instagram e-r-i-k-h-m-a-t-h-y um currently there's a lot of disassembled five by seven brass lenses with dodgy falling apart uh, repairs happening there and also fairly soon there'll be a really really pretty 1915 soldiers pocket camera that i'm going to start to play with for uh the next project that i'm doing in france so, yeah, and bunnies, always bunnies. Excellent. And uh, for myself, I have a website uh, called simonforsterphotographic.co.uk where you can buy loads of lens caps. Um, so many lens caps. So many lens caps. And also, um, I have a license agreement with the great Ethan Moses of uh, Camerodactyl and I'm um, making some of his uh, delightful things, such yeah, as uh, butter grips. Um, 120 millimeter your case is for your 120 millimeter film as well i saw yeah yeah um there's a there's a thing called a butter box where, where you can put 120 film into it and uh there was an extra file um in in the in the folder that uh, ethan sent to me and it, and it said well, uh, 120 millimeter and i thought oh this looks interesting and i i printed it off and it's exactly the same thing as a is a a butter box that holds five uh, rolls of 120 film except it says 120 millimeter uh, on the side of it and i've posted a couple of pictures of it and it massively winds people up <laughs> it's <laughs> it's really really funny did uh, you know it's not 120 it's not 120 millimeter uh, and um, the, um uh, he's not a listener of the podcast but he's on on twitter uh stig of the dump uh he bu- he bought one and he specifically asked uh for the 120 millimeter version and, Brilliant. Uh, <clears throat> and he uh he posted a photograph of it um late um when he, when he received it and he put a tape measure on it and it just happens to measure 120 millimeters so mm. all those people are getting wound up about it it's they didn't understand it's just the length of the box mm. and that's all you know so um i don't know so um yeah so so there's those things um i'm on twitter as simon four uh, that's f-o-r rather than the number four um instagram simon forster photographic uh all that kind of stuff um so uh i think that's it um so we, we didn't really we... cover a lot of ground did we apart from talking about you simon which is lovely <laughs> no because you've been and i'm sure we no, didn't we have get to catch up on us that's fine well, well i'm sure we haven't got to all of it so I, I guess that means we have to 
have part two or three. You may, yeah. I, I may, I may come back. I may, it may be, it may be less than a year before you. Sorry, eighteen months or whatever it was before you see me again. Um, actually, I just remembered uh, our music by Kevin McLeod, and it's called Two Finger Johnny, and everybody likes it. Um, and um, so that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed the podcast, and uh, I'd be grateful as if you can join us again next time. So goodbye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.